Welcome to Reformed University. You've been assigned to teach a class, and that probably means you will be measuring your students' progress. Now, the easiest way to do that is through a test or a quiz, and this video will show you how to create one online inside your class environment inside of Populi LMS. The first thing you have to do is log into the academic portal by clicking the button on our front page on the right top corner, or you can go to runiv.populiweb.com and simply put in your credentials to enter. Once you landed on your personal dashboard, click on My Courses tab and go and select the course in which you're going to create a test. Once you land on your class page, please go to the assignments area on the left sidebar. And you see that I already have assignments here. You already see that I have a quiz number one assigned to week three is a draft. Your assignment area may not look like this. And if, if it doesn't, that means you have not created assignments, you have not created a grade book. Please go back and watch video number four, how to create assignments, how to create a grade book for instructors, and then proceed with this video. But I'm going to show you how to create the assignment if you've already done that, all you have to do is click the button up on top, add assignment, and a new window pops up. When a new window pops up, you have to fill in some sections. So first you have to give it a name. 03 is because I am using this quiz in week three. Then I name it quiz one, give a little description, and you could see that the next section is type, and I have to select test. It may say something like grade only, but that's if I'm uh, grading the assignment manually. But I want this to be a real live online quiz that students can take uh, online right away. So I'm gonna call it a test, and that will open up a whole bunch of new sections in this window. Now, another important uh, feature is that I'm going to say that it belongs to the group named Quizzes. This is why it's so important that you should create your gradebook first. If you did not create the gradebook, you not have that group called Quizzes. So you would have no place to put your quiz. And this way the system recognizes that you're creating a test and placing it in the Quizzes, which has already an assigned appropriate weight to it. So then you have to choose whether you want it published or not. At this point, I would suggest if you're creating a quiz and you're not done with it, do not publish it. Uh, if you click publish, then it will be visible to everyone enrolled in a class. An important field not to forget that you can't actually see in the screenshot is the points. You always assign 100 points to every assignment. Why? Because uh, every task is then later weighted through the categories. So once you've done that, you move on to the due date section, and that's very flexible. Of course, you can select just a particular date and a particular time, and you can make uh, your test available to students all the time, right away, or you can delay it. So the next window says availability, always available. Well, if you change that option to certain dates, uh, then of course that creates certain flexibility for you. I like to do quizzes for my students where they're available from Monday through Friday. And that way students that are taking classes online or in person, they have certain amount of flexibility. As long as they take that quiz between Monday and Friday, they're okay. So I'll make it due by Friday, but I will open it for availability on Monday. And also you set a time limit for the test. So uh, if your test is very long, of course, you might want to do more. 30 minutes is just kind of the average. So uh, please estimate how long you think it would take your students to complete the test. The following section talks about retake and retake policies, and I don't usually recommend doing retakes unless uh, you have a specific need for that, and we are not proctoring uh, tests right now. That's not something that we have available at the moment. And so you can leave the rest of these uh, functions alone and simply click Save. Now, if this assignment did not exist on your list before, now you will have an assignment 03, quiz one. And once you click on that assignment in the assignment area, you will land on the new page where you will see the names of all the students that are registered for class. And you will see a sign that says, this assignment is not published. Why? Because we didn't check that publish check mark. So the way to now edit the actual content of the quiz is you have to go to the right side of your page and you see right there that it's marked that the assignment is not published yet so it's not visible to anyone but you and you can click on 03 quiz 1 you can see that hyperlink at this moment it says there's no questions so you created a placeholder for a test but no actual content and now is the time to create the actual questions so click that link and you will end up on the next page that shows you where you can add specific questions you can always access this test and edit its content by going to the test section on the left sidebar. And in this 
exact test or quiz 01 as we're editing, you could see on the right sidebar all the settings that you assigned 100 points. Uh, the due date, the availability date is right there. The test limit, this is where you can once again edit those features. You have to make sure that you are in a design tab. This gives you an ability to create new questions. And you will see it, uh, several links. Right there it says add a question, add a heading or some text. Of course you can break up your quiz with headings or you can add instructions for questions. But the most common feature of course is add a question. So once you click that you end up on a new page that will give you all sorts of options for different types of questions you can add. So your test is still empty and now that you're ready to add questions once you click that option it brings up a new menu and we're going to try out with the multiple choice setting first. So make sure that the type of a question right there on the drop down menu is multiple choice. You will see that there is a window for a question where you can type out the question or you can simply copy and paste an existing question that you already have saved on one of your documents in the paper quiz. And you can see that the next section is a file upload. You can upload a chart or a graph or an image of some sort uh, right there for your students to view. Because if your question has to do with some sort of a paradigm or something like that, you can certainly add that as a visual aid. Now the next field is answers. Okay, And so right there is really important. Uh, you have to list all the possible answers in the right order. And you put the correct answer first and then all the other answers. You could see that the correct answer has a little blue dot besides it. And on the right, it says 100% credit. So that means this is the only answer that will receive a full credit. And it's really important that you select that dot and select that 100% credit right there. Now that will actually be by default. Uh, but just make sure that that's selected. And so once you do that, don't worry, the questions will be randomized because the next section the point number four right there is to randomize. You simply tack that little option and all of the questions will be jumbled up and changed in order for every student that addresses the test. They will actually be different in every test. The system will rotate them uh, in a random way. Then the only part that's left is to assign the points. And so I'm assigning 20 points to this particular question out of max 100. And of course, once I do that, the important part is not to forget to save my question. Once I click save, I see that my question has been added now to the list of questions in my quiz. And I can see the number of points right there. I can see that I can edit it or even to delete this question if I change my mind. And the next move is to click on those three little dots underneath the question block. And that will reveal the three commands that we started with. Add a question or add a heading or add a text. And so we're going to add another question now. We're going to actually add a different type of question now. So the multiple choice question comes up as default and I have to switch to a true false variety. Once I do that, a slightly different menu opens up and the options change. I still have a question window right there. You can see now it says true false. And so I enter my question text right there and then of course I can still upload a file to show something to students but then I have the answer options true or false and this is an important part right here in the answer I actually have to choose whether this question that or the statement that I'm stating in the question window is true or false the system's not going to know it until I tell it so I choose true or false assign point value and once again click save that was a very easy process. So now we're going to repeat the same. We're once again, see the second question. We're going to click those three dots, select add another question. But this time we're going to experiment with the essay question and see how that works. And once again, this is a very similar process. Make sure that you select the essay option because the multiple choice will be by default. And then you have the question window where you can uh, type out the question that you wish to ask. And so then students will actually see a window for them to type their essay and you don't have to do anything about that because that is a fully subjective uh, answer that they're going to give you uh, but you do need to add a point value so i'm giving 20 points and clicking save once again and we're done with that question as well and i'm back to the main quiz window where i see that the questions keep adding up and i keep adding one more question uh, so another essay question uh, let me see if i can give this question actually 40 points because that's enough i just want to uh, finish out with this uh, quiz for now. And so once I add 40 points and go back and save, I will end up on that main quiz page. 
So now you can see on the right side, uh, on the right column, that I have allocated all of the 100 points available to me. It doesn't say that I have any unassigned points left. So I spread my points between those questions. Now I can choose to edit question points. If I want to bump up a certain question and make it 25 points or 30 points, I can change those values at this point. And other than that, the uh, test is ready and I can now preview this quiz and see what it looks like for students. So in order to see the test the way my students would see it, I have to switch from the design tab to preview tab. And once I do that, I can see the test the way my students would see. So there's my multiple choice question with different options that I can pick. Uh, here's my true and false and my two essay questions. Very short quiz, but it does the job. So now that I am done, I can go to the assignments area. And in the assignments area, I see my quiz 03, quiz one, and it's still a draft. So the time has come now for me to publish it because I'm done. I've allocated all the points. I made sure all my questions are complete. So now I have to go and publish it. There are several ways to publish a test in Poply, but the easiest one is to go to the assignment section and click on that assignment. So you click on the quiz and you will see that it is not published. On the right side, it says published no. You see the edit button. You click edit and it brings up that original window where all the settings that were entered, make sure that the due date is correct, availability date is correct, and uh, all the information on that page is accurate and simply check, publish, and save. And then your quiz will show up as published and ready to go in your assignments group. So let's do a quick review of the entire process. First, you log in to your portal. Of course, you go to my courses and to the course page. Inside the course page, you go to the assignments area and that's where you add the assignment. However, if you have not created the gradebook, this is very important, create the gradebook first. Watch video number four. Once that step is done, then you can start adding assignments and modifying assignments and getting everything ready. So to create this online quiz, essentially you add an assignment and you select the title, you select the description, and most importantly, you select the right type. You have to say test, not grade only or anything else. And then you have to add 100 points uh, to the value of the test and you have to select of course the category into which it's going to fall such as quizzes uh, if you created that assignment group when you uh, created your gradebook then it will be available to you now do not publish a test before it is ready um, and uh, wait for that but do select the due date and the time and availability and then don't forget to click save Edit the contents of the test by adding all sorts of questions until you used up 100 points and they're all allocated and then preview your test. Make sure that everything is correct and ready to go. Check all the details and then publish the test. It will become available to your students right away, but they will not be able to engage with it until those dates that you have set up as the limitations. Now, the easiest way to administer a test like this is to simply let your students know that it's ready. They can go to the assignment section and they can click on the test and they can take it. Uh, or you can create lesson plans and place a link for the test in those lesson plans. Uh, for that, please watch another video. It's a really great way to guide your students through the learning process.